Wednesday, the North Carolina State Board of Elections ordered a new election to take place in the state's 9th Congressional District. The Republican, Mark Harris, who earned the most votes last November, said a new election is necessary to regain the public's trust. And this comes after one of Harris's advisors orchestrated an absentee ballot scheme in which she reportedly filled out ballots in favor of Harris. Now her decision is bringing new life to the candidacy of Democrat Dan McCready, who will get another shot at challenging Harris. Joining me now, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Newsbaum. Now, Barry, I'm going to start with the first story that we were talking about regarding the mayor. I want to start with, is it normal practice for a SWAT team to show up first uh, to begin with for something such as just serving a warrant on someone who is practicing malpractice, I suppose? Well, this is the part about this story that upsets me and concerns me um, in terms of excessive force when it was not warranted. The fellow they're serving the warrant on, which is a piece of paper, is a former doctor holding a medical license and is the mayor of the city. They showed up in the middle of the night, in the dark, pounded on his door, when he didn't answer, then they tried to break the door down. And when they couldn't break the door down with a battering ram, they used a shotgun to blow the door open. Now, at that point, if you're asleep in bed and your house is getting shot up while you're half asleep or three quarters asleep, it's not abnormal to shoot at whoever has broken into your house and is shooting at you. That's the part that's disconcerting. Why bring SWAT in the middle of the night to serve a piece of paper? Why not show up when the guy's awake, knock on the door and hand it to him? I guess conversely of that now, Roger Stone looks like Gandhi for the way that he reacted to SWAT teams pulling up to his house. <laughs> but I, I also want to ask on the other side of that spectrum, because now that individual, the mayor, is being charged with two counts of attempted murder for those gunshots. So I almost want to go through just really what the legal precedent is in regard to the fact that he was approached in the middle of the night. And from what I was from what I've read, no phone call, no anything like that from police asking him to turn himself in. And I just want to note, warrants have to be very narrowly tailored of what they're searching for. You can't just be this broad type of spectrum. And so unless it's said that he had a bazooka in his closet, this does seem very much so unwarranted. But what about the second degree or the, the two uh, attempted murder charges? What is the precedent for that? Does he have any defense to say that I thought that I was in severe jeopardy? I didn't know it was a SWAT team or something like that as he's standing on his own property in Florida, albeit? I have no doubt that if he hires competent defense counsel, they're going to say that this is a police state response to what should have been, like you said, a normal filing of a piece of paper. If somebody tries to break down your door in the middle of the night and then shoots the door open with a shotgun, which is what the police did, and it wasn't the regular police that serve warrants, it was the SWAT team. They came in firing weapons. What would a normal person do who's an older gentleman, who's a doctor and the mayor think is happening? He probably thought they were there to kill him without knowing who they were. Thank goodness he missed the police, and I mean that sincerely. And I would imagine at some point in the future, the questions I've just raised will be raised by his defense counsel as well. Absolutely. And thank God the bullet did miss the police. But on the hindsight of that, I guess, too, is thank God it didn't hit anyone else. And I guess the whole premise of the situation was brought up to the idea that there was aggression. But I do want to switch gears really quick to the North Carolina situation where there's a new election coming because of so-called absentee ballot harvesting, I guess you could call it. And I just want to ask, how does this differentiate from other practices that we've seen in California, which go basically unanswered? You know, the unique part about this story is there are a huge number of questionable ballots as to where they came from and how they were used. But get this, the guy that won, the guy that was declared the winner, the Republican has supported a completely new election. He said he doesn't want to go to Washington without the confidence of the voters in that district because of the questions unresolved about the election procedures and the ballots that, well, appeared out of nowhere. The guy's got some real class in turning down being sworn in and saying, hey, let's have a do over and let's have outsiders watch our election policies since there seem to be a whole lot of ballots just showing up. I wish 
other candidates had the same degree of integrity that this gentleman does in this congressional election. It's the only election that is not decided from the 2018 election that took place last November. And so I don't even know how this goes moving forward. I was trying to look up case law of how this would go, but it seems to be almost unprecedented. Do you know how the next election goes? Do these two candidates just go back up at it again and see whoever gets the most votes the same way they did last November? As I understand it, that's what they're calling for. And you're right. There is no procedure for election do overs. Uh, you, it could happen in a sixth grade race for class president. I don't ever have any knowledge of this happening in a congressional race uh, in the United States. They're going to figure it out and have a whole new election. But this time, every ballot is going to be certified. Good for them. Well, Barry, these are certainly some strange stories, and you're just the man that we needed to talk to in order to, I guess, give us some clear headset, because, I, don't, I mean, I've never seen any of these things happen before. A mayor in a shootout with his own SWAT team and a new election with the winner calling for the new election. So it's certainly something that I've never seen before. Excellent job clearing it up. Barry, thanks for joining us tonight.